everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pound, man. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support, man. Let's get it. We're on the road to 100K, man. Who with me? Who with me? If you, my friend, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell his friend about what we got going on over here, man. Let's get this thing to 100K. We got to get out there. We got to we gotta get more exposure. We got to get this message out there. I love the people that support me, man. I love y'all so much. And y'all doing a great job, man. We went and got the 60K. Uh, 7 million views. We wouldn't have got there without y'all, man. So, y'all motivate me. Y'all make me go, man. So, let's get it, man. We got to get 100K then. Two, three, four. We got to get a million, two million, and so on and so forth. This is a message that need to be heard. This is the real stuff about what's going on in prison, man. So, we can keep these young fellas out of prison. You know, if it scares them, if it wakes them up, if it you know, gives them some type of, of knowledge that, that make different paths in life. That's what we want to do. So every time I see a young fella out there to pull up on me like the young dude in the barbershop and things like that, it motivates me to keep going because I know if it just helped one person, that's good enough. If it helped more than that, so be it. More power to it, man. But that's what we're doing. This is a movement. Make no mistake about it. This is a movement. We out here trying to save lives and change lives. That's what we trying to do. So salute to everybody out there on TBP. Salute to everybody who support me. Salute to all, all the young fellas out there, man, that watch me. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love. If you see me in the streets, holler at me. Holler at me. You heard me? So, man, let's go, man. We're on the road to 100K. Uh, I'm trying to drop these videos for y'all. Before I go to Vegas, I'm going to Vegas, Las Vegas, for my mom's 75th birthday. Mama Pam, love you so much. First time in Vegas, and um, can't wait. So I'm trying to get some of these videos out here to y'all before I go. I'm going to try to vlog when I'm out there. Even though y'all ain't showing me much love for the vlogs, I ain't getting that many views for the vlogs. I appreciate everybody who did watch it, though. I appreciate everybody who gave me comments in the vlogs. I'm going to continue to do the vlogs until y'all just... You know, if y'all ain't supporting it enough, I'll leave it alone and go back to something else. they are doing these 33 years of prison stores. But I just want to make sure y'all engaged. I want to make sure y'all entertained. I want to make sure y'all are getting something out of these videos. So you got to let me know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Share these videos on all y'all platforms, man. If it's uh, uh, social media or Facebook and all that, you know, I don't really know too much about Facebook. I'm kind of green. But I heard Facebook is a great platform. I got to get the time to find out how to actually operate it so I can get on there as well just to put this message out there as much as possible. And if you follow me here on YouTube, man, follow me on Instagram, man, Boxing Bank, man, the official page of uh, Banky Pound, man. Y'all go check me out on Instagram. I post every day on Instagram. No matter what it is, I post something every day on Instagram. So y'all go follow me. I ain't even got 10,000 followers on Instagram. How do I got 60,000 over here and don't even got 10 over there? If you're rocking with me, you're rocking with me. Who you with? Huh? Let's go, man. Let's get it. Um. Anyway, this story right here, man, I was thinking about this cat the other day, man, because I had some dudes that come over here uh, and chill with me for, uh, you know, Memorial Day weekend, man. We sat out there and reminisce and had some good old fun. Posted a little shot of that on my Instagram. So y'all go check me out. But um, it just made me, you know, think about some things that we was talking about different people, man. So I wanted to hip y'all to this dude named Bolo. <laughs> Bolo. Now, when you heard the name Bolo, when I heard the name Bolo, the first person come to my mind is the big Chinese dude from um, all the Bruce Lee movies. His name was Bolo. You know, if y'all ever watch the Bruce Lee movie, y'all know him, man. He was Bolo. You know, he had big old Chinese muscle dude. Now, this Bolo was a short... Black, uh, stocky, strong, crazy dude named Bolo that was in prison with me. I don't know if Bolo was locked up before me or what, but I know he been locked up a long time because I've known him for years, decades. But 
Bolo is just as crazy as uh, you can ever imagine. <laughs> he's a different type of crazy, though. He's really a good dude. And I know y'all always say, I always say good dude. And I tell y'all things about that he did or do that y'all say ain't so good. But you got to know these dudes. You got to know their heart. You got to know their intent. You got to be around them on a regular basis. You can't just judge a person for their actions. You got to really know them. And their actions may not be indicative of who they are. It may be the circumstances that make them act the way they do. But Bolo is crazy. <laughs> Bolo is straight crazy, man. And, and, and the crazy part about Bolo is that you never know what he's going to do. When he do it, it's spontaneous, it's unexpected, and you be like, what? You know, Bolo just would come out of the blue and do some stuff, man, to just be like straight shock value, and it, it, it'll it just mess you up. And um, I remember when I first met Bolo, I was already surprised or intrigued about his voice. And when I tell you he got a deep old, uh, what you call it, very white voice, it, he got a deep, very white voice, man. He's short, he's stocky, he got a big belly, but he big up top. He lift weights every day. He always working out. He's strong as an ox, you know, and he lift weights all the time, but he just got a gut too, and he got this deep old voice, and he talk real slow, and then he got this crazy deep old laugh, but you know how he talk, he might say, hey, yo, what's up, man, man, what's, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, when they gonna let us out here, man? That's always his opening line when he see me. Man, when they gonna let us out here, man? You know, and in his case, he ain't no telling cause he snaps out at any time. Any given moment, Bolo would snap out. And the thing about it is he got a one hit a quitter, man. He, he, he got a one hit a quitter and I just seen him use it on several occasions. And I got to say, every time that I ever seen him use it, it was unexpected. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even know that, that he was really gonna use it, you know, but he would. And Bolo, man, I just seen Bolo in some crazy situations. I'm trying to remember the first time I was around him. I think the first time I was around him was probably Mecklenburg. And um, I went to Mecklenburg in uh, like 90, 91, somewhere around that time. So in essence, I've known him ever since then, you know, since 90, 91. I was actually with him in... Uh, not away before I made parole. He was there with me until his incident, which I'll get to later on. But he was there then, you know, and um, Bolo is a Muslim, you know, he, he, you know, and, and in prison, Muslims got to live by a strict code. They got to be doing these certain things. They say what they call is on their dean. And Bolo will be on that. He'll be on his dean most of the time, but it just, it just take one little incident to, to get him off track. And he off to the races without question, without uh, uh, hesitation. He he just snap out, man. And um, like I said, I've seen him do it on many occasions. I'm um, trying to think of the first time that I ever seen him do anything, you know. And the, the crazy part about him is, like I said, you meet all kinds of dudes in prison. I mean, I'm telling you right now, anything you ever seen in a movie, anything you ever seen in real life. All the different types of dudes you might have seen in school, in junior high, high school, and you see all these different personalities, these different qualities, these different traits. In prison, that's tenfold. Because you're around so many different characters, so many different people, you're gonna see every type of people all walks of life in prison. And after a while, nothing surprises you. You used to everything because you see everything. When I first went to prison, I was surprised about everything. Everything I saw for the first time just blew my mind, you know. When I first saw a dude getting stabbed, like I told y'all in the ball, I was like, man, what, what, what is they doing up, you know what I'm saying? What they doing up in here? Just how they doing it? And when I first seen a dude fight a police, uh, first seen a dude that I just looked at and didn't know that, you know, he, he liked boys, or first time I seen a dude getting high, you know, it, all of that type of stuff, man, like shooting up. I've seen dudes shoot up. First time I ever saw a dude shoot up George was in prison. And all of that stuff just blow your mind, man. It blow your mind the first time, but after a certain amount of time you've been in prison, you, you become 
more or less numb to it because you expect certain things because you've seen so much. But it's always people that are surprised you still do something. You'll be like, man, what? He did that? Bolo one of them type of dudes, you know? Bolo can be around you. He can be happy. He can be laughing. Y'all can be joking and playing. And in a split second, it'll turn violent because Bolo will snap out. He'll snap out and you won't even know it. And especially if you don't know him. I think the first time, I'm trying to remember the first incident I seen him in was, I think I was on Mecklenburg and uh, he was out there and he was lifting weights. And on Mecklenburg, you got the basketball court, but it's caged in with a fence around it and barbed wire. It's just a whole basketball court. But over to the corner, small area, they got the weights. And Bolo used to be over there lifting weights and just laughing and joking with people. Like I say, he got this big booming voice, man. It's like, it, for real, it's like his voice should be on radio. He literally talks so deep and loud that you, you definitely gonna hear him. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's up, man? Yeah, hey, uh, y'all y'all ain't, y'all ain't put no work in today. Y'all ain't living no weight. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see you out there, though. I see you. Gonna pull that jumper? Yeah, put that jumper in there. That's how he talk. You, you will never not hear him. He always gonna be the loudest dude in the room. His voice gonna be booming and echoing. And, and you know, like I say, most of the time he got a smile on his face. He laughing, he jovial, he's always happy. But that's what tricks do. Cause when he mad, he give you no detection that he mad. He just, you know, he be like, yeah, you right, you right, you right. And next thing you know, bam, he'll take off on you. <laughs> he'll take off on you and, and lay you out. If he get you with the first punch, that's a wrap. And I'm gonna tell you this too. I tell y'all this a lot of times. I told y'all this a lot on my uh, videos. Ain't no mercy in prison. And then you can't depend on somebody in prison to give you mercy because they may not have none. Now in Bolo case, he ain't got no mercy. If he engaged physically with you, he's going to try to hurt you to, to, to the 10th power. Someone is literally going to have to stop him. If you go unconscious or you go down and Bolo get on top of you, it's a wrap. He he gonna he gonna savage you, man. He is gonna savage you with no mercy. Trust me when I tell you this, cause I've seen it. And um, like I say, the first time I think he was on that court, man, and um, he was laughing and joking from the sideline, and somebody said something to him. He said something back. They told him man his business, and he bumped out with the boom and laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. You right. You right, you right, you got that, you got that. And as soon as the game was over, and dude was on the sideline, wiping all the sweat off his face, just talking and like, yeah, man, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, we should have won, but you know, he's shooting all them old ugly jumpers, messing the game up, I ain't wanna pass the ball, woo, woo. And Bolo walked right over to him and tapped him on his shoulder, and he turned around, and as soon as he turned around, boom, Bolo hit him. Drop him. I mean, one hit a quitter. And like I told you, he a big dude. He's strong. Bolo probably weigh about, man, Bolo might be about 260, 270. Boom! Drop him. Dude fall down. Everybody out there on the court, they looking around like, what the what is And Bolo just get on top of him and bam, 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 bam. I mean, just beat him, man. He just savage him. Blood is coming from everywhere. I mean, it, it's like some stuff you see in a movie. As his fist hit his face, you see blood just pop up, pop up, and he just bam, bam. And the dude was unconscious. He was just unaware, you know what I'm saying? Just just out of it. And Bolo just pounding him, man, and it took a dude to grab him and say, that's enough, Bolo, that's enough, and pull him up off of him. And Bolo said, yeah, 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 funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we all laughing now. <laughs> And, and dudes is looking at him like, man, this cat crazy. Because <laughs> that's definitely how I was looking at him. I'm like, man, Bolo crazy. Because so, dude said some stuff, but I thought at the time it was all in. You know, they just they just joined on each other. They just talking trash. Nah, not the Bolo. 
He don't want to be embarrassed. He don't want to be made a, a, a mockery. He don't want you to, to shine on him or what he would call you trying to shine on me, getting loud in front of other people. He ain't going for it. And he'll laugh and act like he all right with it. But man, you better watch him because I'm telling you, he was he will walk up on you and he would take off on you without you know. He'll walk up on you, be like, yeah, hey, look, check this out. Boom! And take off on him. And take off on you, man, and lay you out, man. And he would get on top of you and beat you down to make sure you ain't gonna get up and do nothing to him. Straight like that. Bolo, one hit a quitter, man. Yeah, one hit a quitter. He got one. And you got dudes like that, man. They got that power that if, if they hit you one time or they hit you first, it's a wrap. You know, I don't care who you is. And you know, it's the same in boxing. Every, everything, you know, every, every man is made the same. The heart may be different, but every man is made the same. You know, if you get hit right, I don't care who you is. Tyson, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, whoever you are, if you get hit right, and especially if you get hit unexpected, it's a wrap for you. You know, it's a wrap for you. This is why boxers train so hard, and you see all these boxers in the ring, and then you say, okay, you got punches, just like we just had the tank fight with Rolly. Okay, tank a punch, a Rolly a punch. But if you get hit right, I don't care who you are, you going out. Is no man immune, or you can build up your muscles, you can build up your stamina, you can build up your skills. You cannot build your chin. There's no way you can make muscles in your chin. If you get hit right on that button, man, it's night night for you. It's straight night night for you. I don't care who you is, but this is why boxers train. They train not to get hit. You see what I'm saying? The, the, the art of boxing is actually the, the, the definition, the real root word is a pugilist. That's what a boxer is called, pugilist. If you ask a boxer what is his profession, he's a professional pugilist, you know. And when you're a professional pugilist, the, the sweet science is what they call boxing. The art of boxing is to hit and not get hit. So when you get two dudes in there that's punches, the one that has the best defense is going to be the one who wins because that's going to be the one who avoid the big punches. That's what happened with Tank and Roller. Tank is a knockout artist. Roller is a knockout artist. But Tank defense and overall skills was better than Roller's. That's why Roller went to sleep. You see what I'm saying? Even though all the trash he talked, because he's thinking about how hard he hit. Oh, yeah, I just hit him one time. I hit him one time. It's over with. It's got to be over. Yeah, he, Tank ain't nothing. A one punch, yeah, you got to land that one punch, though. You got to land that. You can't just go in there and say you're going to hit somebody. Ain't nobody, uh, you know, you might get hit a regular person because they're going to be unaware. They're they not going to know how to slip, bob, weave, and all of that. Parry the punch. They're not going to know all of that. You might do that to a regular person. Yeah, one punch, he out of here. But you're not going to do that to somebody who's trained not to be knocked out. You see what I'm saying? Not to be caught with flush shots. And see, in Bolo case, man, Bolo had a one hit a quitter. And most dudes that he take off with is not prepared. They're not ready to be hit. They're not expecting to be hit. They're not prepared to be hit. But messing with Bolo, guess what? You gonna be hit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he gonna take off on you, man. And I'm telling you, man, he beat that boy so bad. And um, I think I got, that's when the first time I was around him and I, then I didn't see him for a while. Because he ended up getting locked up for that. He stayed in the hole so long that by the time he did come out, I was gone. I, was, I, I had got transferred. But that has been a running theme with him. Every time I ran him, I've been around him on, uh, for several years in, in different institutions, different camps. And all the time, it always ended up the same way. Whenever I didn't see him no more, whenever he ended up getting gone, it's because Bolo did something to somebody. Oh, man, what Bolo at, man? Bolo locked up. What happened to Bolo, man? Bolo beat up such and such man in the kitchen. Uh, Bolo beat up such and such on the yard. Uh, Bolo beat up. It's always that. He ain't going to get locked up for nothing else. It's always going to be because he put the mitts on somebody who try to laugh, joke, play, or take him for weak and end up learning the hard way. You know what I'm saying? And, um, man, uh, 
<laughs> and the crazy, the ironic part about it is every time you see them, when they gonna let us out here, man? Man, I used to always think in my mind, Bolo, they ain't gonna let you out here if you keep doing all this foolishness, man. You know, but I used to always say, I don't know, Bolo, I don't know. Man, said, yeah, man, Bolo, how long you been locked up there? How long? And I tell my Lord, I be like, man, yeah, me too. Me too, man, Bolo. They cut dude loose, though. Yeah, they get ready to do something. Yeah, they get ready to do something, man. I'm ready, though. I'm ready. You know, and I used to be like, all right, Bolo, that's what's up. That's what's up. But he won't be, he won't be, because he'll come out here, the same thing I, since I've been out here, I can see how the way people act out here, the way people move is so different than the way we act and the way we move in prison. And you get out there and Bolo will get to a gas station and somebody be eyeballing him or, or say something slick or, the road rage and he cut somebody off and then man Bolo will follow somebody man and knock they block off when they get out of the car. He approach him with some uh some humble hey what what me what me what's going on uh bang and take off on you know what I'm saying they be somewhere laid out in the street Bolo be locked back up so you know I I ain't trying to put that on him but I I, I hope that wouldn't happen but from what I know of him. That's a very, very high probability, man. <laughs> That's a very high probability. Because like I say, man, I, I done seen them punish some dudes, man, on some crazy stuff that you wouldn't even expect him to do it on. And I done been in a pod with him. I was in a pod with him, I think, on uh, Sussex 2. I ended up being in the pod with him. And I remember he was in the pod with a little young dude that I know, right? And that I had been around. So the young dude asked me, pull up on me, said, man, and this young dude was thorough. And when I say thorough, I mean he go hard. He he ain't gonna be taken advantage of. He ain't no sucker. He, he was a real dude, but he just was a young dude. But he gonna fight for years, and he had enough size on him and enough heart that he gonna fight hard, period. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up, he ended up getting moved over there. He get put in cell with Bolo because Bolo had the only single cell. And Bolo already, when he come in there, Bolo started laying there and the law to him. Oh, uh, hey, yeah, uh, yeah, you on the top, man, and uh, this cell right here, man, you know, it's all about respect. You know, this how we do it in here. Uh, I don't tolerate no disrespect, and I ain't giving out no disrespect. That's just how it is, straight, straight like that, right? But uh, you a young man, you be all right, man, 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 bolo and, ooh, and give him the whole spill. But he really won't feel in that because he was feeling like Bolo is bullying him. And he like, man, you don't, you know what I'm saying? I know how to do time, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't need you to narrate or give Bolo like, yeah, well, you know, this my cell. You know, I mean, you in here now, but, you know, I was in here. This my cell. You know, this how I occurred. You know what I'm saying? And that's how he coming. Cause he ain't gonna bite his tongue for nobody at no time. I don't care who it is. So the young dude pull up on me. I'm like, man, what's up with this dude, Bolo, man? You know what I'm saying? He up in there talking all this crazy stuff, and he wanna talk all night, and his voice so loud, and this, that, and the third. I said, look, man. <laughs> I tell him, I said, look, man. Be leery of this dude. I said, he a good dude. But don't say no anything to him or don't just pop off on him or come out, out your mouth. Think about what you say before you say something. I said, because he a little off. You know what I'm saying? He said, what you mean by that? I'm saying, he a little off, man. I'm telling you. He'll laugh and he'll be listening to what you say. But if you say something disrespectful or you say something that's going to irk him or annoy him, man, I'm telling you, he might swing on you. So a little young one like, man, shh. Man, I swing on me. I'm telling you, man, man. I'm, I'm telling you, you swing on me, man. I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm a stab the, the shit out of. I'm telling. You. I said, listen, bro. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't let it get to that point. Just if you don't want to be in the cell with him, just holler at the people. Try to get out. Try to wait till a cell come over. Tell them you'll move in another cell, whatever, whatever. But I'm telling you, don't get in no conversation with that man in that cell, man. I'm telling. you. He was like, yeah, man, I'm telling you, man, he too big, man. I ain't going to play with him, man. I'm going to, you know, he talking about putting that Bethlehem in him. But the crazy thing about it is Bolo would Bolo use that Bethlehem too. No problem, no 
problem whatsoever. Bolo, Bolo will push that Bethlehem up in you as well. So, and he and he's smart. He know his opponent, he know who he dealing with. Before he ever make a move or do something, he done already thought it out. He's cerebral. He thought it out, you know what I'm saying, before he do what he do. So I'm telling the young dude, trying to give him good game and let him know, I know you in the cell, I know you uncomfortable. And that's one of the most craziest things to be is uncomfortable in the cell, man. When you in prison, man, and you got a cell partner, and man, you ain't getting along with him, that's supposed to be your sanctuary. That's supposed to be where you go, where you can relax. You ain't got to be on God 100% because all these dudes out here crazy when you walk out in the block. You got to be on God 100%. If you ain't on God 100%, that 1% you ain't on God, somebody can take your head off. You know, and you might go out there, you be like, I ain't got no beef with nobody. I ain't doing nothing to nobody. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, but people crazy up in there, man. This is the house of crazy. Somebody might come at you with some underlying feelings they done had about you that they ain't even ever expressed to you. But the day... Their day going so bad that they just throwing caution to the wind, say F everything. Oh, yeah, and I don't like banking. I'm going to tear his head off today. You know what I'm saying? So with, with, with those type of thoughts and processing and going through a dude, man, you got to be on point, man. You got to be on point every time you walk out that cell. But when you come in your cell, man, you're supposed to be able to let that go. You're supposed to be able to relax. You're supposed to be able to say, okay, all right, I'm good. You're supposed to be able to lay down. Close your eyes and don't think or worry about somebody doing something to you because there ain't nobody in the cell but one dude. So anybody do something to you, it got to be him. So you supposed to be to the point where you comfortable with the, your cell partner, the dude that's in the cell with you, enough to lay your head down and the rest and the rest easy. You see what I'm saying? You always going to be on some type of guard because you're in prison. That's how I was. I don't care for my coolest cell partner to my worst cell partner. I never slept with the with the intent or the belief that I was completely safe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I just ain't believed that. And I wouldn't allow my mind to believe that because when you allow your mind to believe that, you're tricking yourself and you put yourself in harm's way. So I was trying to give him that game and let him know, man, don't sleep on that dude in there, man. I'm telling you. I said, he's not a bad dude, but... He is a dude that will do something. And he might do something not knowing that you feel like he should do something. So watch your words with him and be particular with him, man, because he a little, you know what I'm saying, he a little tie -ta, man. So he was like, man, I'm getting out of the cell with this cat. I ain't trying to be in there with him, man. I'm telling you, man, I ain't gonna let him do nothing to me, man. If he do something to me, I'm told you, man, I'm gonna stab the own or what out of him, man. You know, I got it. I got it on me. He said he got that Bethlehem. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, I bought it with me from the other block. So I got it, man. So I just wanted to know from you, are you all right with him? You cool with him? Because dudes want to know if you all right with a dude, even if they considering or thinking about doing something to a dude. Because if you cool with a the dude, they'll automatically assume if I do something to his partner, then I got beef with him. And I was cool with Bolo, but we won't like locked in like we were super friends and nothing. But we was cool, and, and truth be told, I like him. I like him. Me and him ain't never had a problem. I always liked him. He was a cool cat, you know. But anyway, you know, so I was giving, I was giving my little young the, the, the run up on him. So that gave my little young some leeway to know how to deal with him and know how to react to him in the cell. And he went in there and started doing, you know, what I told him to do. He he took my words, you know, he took heed to him. And I appreciate that because most young dudes don't listen. They want to learn the hard way. But the hard way will get you in penitentiary. The hard way will get you in the hospital. The hard way will get you a helicopter ride. The hard way will get you on life support fighting for your life. See what I'm saying? So you got to listen, man. That's how I learned. That's how I got my knowledge. I always listen to old heads. I always listen to people that have been there before me. If you don't listen, you don't learn. I'm going to say it again now. If you don't listen, you don't learn. It's just like in school. If you don't listen to what's going on, you're not going to know that assignment. If you don't listen, you don't learn, man. You got to listen, man, because these, these, this, this, this is vital information. Because had I not told him that and he go in there or I've been one of the most old sucker dudes, get all oh, man, Bolo ain't nothing going there, man. Tell him, lay down the law. Tell him what you, tell him what you ain't going for. Man, Bolo would have killed him up in that cell. 
I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to steal a dude down the wrong path or give him no false information. You know, as our ex-president would say, Trump, I'm not going to give him no fake news. I'm going to tell him the truth to make sure that he handled the situation the way it needs to be handled and be cautious as he needs to be cautious. But, man, it worked out in his favor, man, because, like I say, we on Sussex 2. And Bolo, man, he's a, always a walking danger, man. And we was out there, and it was this dude that used to be on Mecklenburg, which I'll never forget it, man. And Priest, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry for telling this story if you out here on the street, man. But I'm sorry, but I, I got to tell it. But it was a tall dude named Priest that was with me on Mecklenburg. He left hand dude, always played basketball. He real tough, about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, cool dude, always thought he was like slick, thought he was like a pimp or something. Man, he used to always have his cell fixed up so immaculate with candles burning all in his cell and incense hanging all out everywhere. You know, he would come out there with his little uh, fedora cock to the side or little head and little toothpick in his, man, Prince, he was just an extravagant dude. Right, over the top type dude. But he liked to laugh, joke, and play. Man, we was coming from child one day, and he laughing at something Bolo did and joking on Bolo, and, and everybody else joined in and started laughing. That was the worst thing that could have happened. So dudes is laughing and laughing. So when we get to the building, and dude holding the door open for everybody to go in the building, and we, we filing in and filing in. So priest stepped to the side. He's standing right there trying to smoke a cigarette before you go in because you can't smoke in the building, you can smoke outside. He trying to smoke a cigarette before he get in, laughing and joke. So then here come Bolo in the line and Bolo get close to the door. So he's still laughing and joking about everybody laughing about the, the, the funny stuff he said about Bolo. So Bolo come up there and Bolo like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was funny though, right? You, yeah, you got me, you got me. Yeah, and go like to dap him up. But Bolo was like, yeah, bomb. Knock them, slam out. The bank is special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure deliciousness, man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.